Brenna? Hi. So you're in British Columbia as well? Yes, I am. I'm in Burnaby, BC, where I grew up and uh, moved away to the States for a while, and now I'm back. <laughs> so we have uh, a, another great video that you produced. Uh, would you like to take a moment and go ahead and introduce yourself in, in your video? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, thanks to um, the wonderful guidance of Colin and Hitomi, uh, they put together something um, kind of dreamlike, I think. <laughs> um, so my, uh, my story is about connecting with our local farms. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're so special to us, so important, and I'm glad that I could showcase a little bit, um, you know, considering what they're all going through right now. Um, but, uh, I, you know, we, to combine both worlds for a true tropical nouveau, uh, I thought it was, uh, in Hitomi, we thought it was a great idea to, to feature, um, to feature my friend Shirley, uh, and she has a, a, a really, really beautiful, um, land and garden. So I'll be showing you a, an installation with some eco-friendly mechanics, um, that could be used for, used as a photo app at, um, wedding receptions or, um, you know, even, uh, company parties. So I guess, yeah, I got to preview a little bit and, um, it, you'll get to enjoy just the beauty of all the flowers. So. Hello everyone, I'm Brenna Kwan and I'm here with Shirley, the owner of the Flower Fort here in Langley, British Columbia. I'm going to set up shop here the next couple of days and we're going to head in and process the flower shipment that I just received from the Hawaiian Islands. Come join us! So here I have my Hawaiian box and I can't wait to see what's inside. So when we get the Hawaii boxes, as you can see, they're packed so well to travel the distance they need to get here to Canada. It's always like Christmas opening up one of these boxes. <laughs> Favorite part. Here we go. Goodness. Wow. Gorgeous Aranthera orchids. This color is going to be fabulous. I sent the color palette that I wanted and boy am I getting it. <laughs> Lots of mixed foliages. Oh my goodness. Okay, here come some super long stems to fill up the entire length of the box. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So we can only get these products from Hawaii and to be able to get them directly from the islands is such a treat because it's bringing the islands to us. We here in Canada are really grateful for their Hui Group buying program where you can get two, three, four boxes together, pool together to save on shipping to get this amazing product to us. And so far, I am absolutely thrilled with what's coming out of this box.
So I'm just processing everything now and just separating my plastics, keeping my rubber bands to reuse. This is always my favorite part of my Hawaii box, are the anthurium. I just love all the color variations and the size. The size is always impressive to me. These are all gonna fit perfectly into the color palette that I had in mind at the beginning. So it's wonderful when you can talk to your sales rep and talk about the color palettes and see what they have available to really bring, bring that out. Look at the different variations in color, even in the back. I just love it. I'm finishing up with the last of the anthurium and oh my goodness, look at these incredible obake, large obake. This is what they're calling large in Hawaii. I think it's probably more mega size. So I'm just finishing up with these and processing. Okay, I'll just get these cut, put them in the bucket and we'll let them have a nice good drink overnight. Tomorrow I'll be back to walk through the garden at Flower Fort here where we can pick some dahlias and zinnias and other fun things that she has to design up a really fun, lush, tropical nouveau design tomorrow.
Well, I'm back at the flower fort on this gorgeous sunny day and I'm going to meet Shirley in her flower beds where I'm going to take a look at all the colors and varieties that I can include in my Tropical Nouveau design. So I brought a few of the Anthurium from the Hawaii shipment into the garden and I already have my eye on certain blooms, these beautiful dahlias that I want to cut to create the Tropical Nouveau design. And how wonderful is it to have the relationships with local growers to be able to actually do this and cut fresh blooms from the garden. Look at all of the colors. I can see colors popping out in the actual anthurium just by comparing and doing side-by-sides of these blooms in the garden. Look at that, the spadex, the yellow spadex tip and the dahlia and oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. I've got to find Shirley because we're going to start cutting here. There she is! <laughs> hey, what have you got so far in your bucket? Oh, zinnias. That's, yeah, I was picking some zinnias. That's so cute. Look how pretty that one is. I love... Oh, look! We've got a little friend there. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. The color combinations, I can already see it blending in with our tropicals. His name is Sandra. Sandra. Ah! We have a friend named Sandra, our flower friend. Glow, glow, glowing up to the heavens. Oh, Isn't yeah. that what it's called? Sheer heaven. Yeah. Oh, sheer heaven. Yeah. Awesome. That's yeah. perfect. Okay, we'll need some of these. Perfect. Yay. Awesome. And these ones too. Perfect. Oh, yeah, we were going to use some of the cosmos, right? Okay. Come here. <laughs> we got to cut some of this. How did you grow them this tall? <laughs> yes, please. All right. So um, how great that I can choose my stem length <laughs> on the fresh cuts of these flowers. Wow. Have you ever seen such <laughs> tall cosmos? <laughs> that won't even sit in the bucket right. Yes. Will be used. Okay. Don't worry about it. Cool. Okay. Let's go over to this amaranthus here. Yes, please. Yay. That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Look at it. Give it a little shake. <laughs> awesome. Okay, got it. I'm gonna fill my camera with, with all these different dahlias. So I think I've got what I need to head back to the installation site. And we're gonna add these to the tropical flower bar that we have set up over there. I can't wait to get started. So we're all set up and I have my beautiful flower bar here in Daisy the flower truck. And I'm gonna show you a freestanding photo op for any event. I'm starting off with a basic wood frame that's very easy to construct. It really just consists of eight pieces of wood, one by two by tens from the hardware store, um, four simple cuts and just screwed, uh, screwed together. So I'm just gonna add some simple mechanics before we add in the flowers. If you're going to free stem, we could simply add chicken wire between the wood pieces here. Uh, but today I'm gonna to show you uh, an economical way to add a water source. So the water source that I'm going to attach to the frame are going to be paper cups. And this is my morning coffee cup that I washed out. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of chicken wire so that it'll hold the flower stems and using simple rubber bands and skewers is how we're going to attach it to the frame. Now all I have to do is cover it in a tea leaf and wrap in a simple hemp twine. 
with a little double knot. Voila. So now I'm gonna pull Shirley in and we're gonna fill this frame up with the same mechanic and hopefully we'll be done in just a second. Now for the base, I'm just going to put some plastic containers down and they've got a little bit of chicken wire held on with rubber bands uh, just for stability. So Shirley cut me this awesome branch off of her maple tree. And so we're just going to start off and base the frame with these and then add my tropicals. Being in Canada, I thought we'd add a little bit of maple flair. <laughs> oh, this piece is really nice. What an incredible array of tropical foliage here. I'm gonna start off with the palm. And it's really starting to take shape. I think the key with this is just really layering in different textures and different colors. All right. Now I think the monstera leaf is what screams tropical. And look at the size. Can you believe by Hawaii standards, this is medium. <laughs> These provide such wonderful coverage and just, it just takes me to the islands. <laughs> This Diefenbachia really takes me back to my childhood. I remember having two large plants in our living room and I was in charge of watering them. And I actually did keep them alive for a long time. <laughs> They're so sturdy and I just love the little variations in the color. Now 
these are thicker stems, so we'll just thin it out a little bit at an angle for easy insertion. I really, really love these anthurium leaves and it, it makes sense to put it in here since we are going to be adding some beautiful colored anthurium. Now for some raphis palm. And it's just lovely how that really fans out. Beginning to take shape here. I just love the blending of the textures and different forms. It's so fun. This is one of my favorites, the curly luai. It's just so fun with this texture and you can really see the contrast with the smooth leaf to the curly leaf. Every time we get a box with these in them, I just have to use all of them. This is something I love getting from Hawaii. It's the banyan root of the tree. And I love swirling it around to give it movement into a design. So I'm just gonna keep it grouped in its, its natural bunching and just weave it in and around my frame. How beautiful is that? Oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> this is so awesome. <laughs> I did use this once in a floral couture display and this was actually her hair. Because I think it really, it does look like hair a little bit. <laughs> Look what I found. A few stowaway monstera roots within the bunch. Let's add those too. Here's the first little bit of color that I'm going to add and because they're such large stems I'm going to secure it right to the frame. So this hanging heliconia, I mean it's so dramatic so we have to bring that in. <laughs> Maybe down on the ground or up. And we're gonna position this one just a little bit higher. And I have a few screws um, put into this wooden frame for this purpose so that I can tie it right onto the frame once again with some hemp twine. Okay, got some red ginger here and I'm just gonna keep building on this right side along with the heliconia.
Here I have a garland of chestnuts that I foraged actually last winter. And it just really reminds me of the Kikui nut lays that we get in Hawaii. And so I thought, well, we're in the Pacific Northwest, so we'll add a chestnut garland. <laughs> So check out this one stem of hanging amaranthus. Isn't it just spectacular? And that's why it's so special to come out to a place where you have things like this just growing wild that you can cut. And here what I'm doing is I'm just mirroring the cascade on the other side to the cascade on the left side of the frame. Wow. All right, looks like I'm ready to dive into this beautiful selection of this Tropical Nouveau blend of local flowers and Hawaiian grown.
So here's the finished photo frame. And let's take a little closer look at some of the flower groupings that I've put together. And I can't help but go directly to these giant large obake anthurium. And I decided just to go with the reds down here and you can see the grouping. Um, and just look at this lovely <laughs> little pop of uh, a brighter color that brings out the color in the achote or lipstick pods. Loving those. I've laced it with aranthra orchids here and just from the field, this solanum. Aren't these berries just wonderful to bring out the colors of the reds and the yellows and the greens? So now I move from the reds into these brown cinnamon colors. We have the brown sugar dahlia to go with our cinnamon anthurium. And moving on up, we have the peaches and the corals. So I really wanted to blend the colors and have them shift. And you can see them fade into each other, which I just love. Um, I've added the alocasia foliage, which is just such a, an eye catcher. So I had to add that up here. And we go along with my garland into the brighter pinks and the corals over here. Salmons and a little bit of yellow. Since we have touches of yellow in the zinnias and uh, we have some touch of yellow in these dahlias here. And I mean, all the colors you'll find in the hanging heliconia, which is just so lovely and really, really sings tropical to me. Now, finally, I moved down into the magentas, which is my personal favorite color. Uh, we have the red ginger here. And then I wanted to uh, add the safari anthuriums down here. And because of the pink tone in the stripe, that spoke to me to bring in these lovely pink dahlias here. Uh, we have the cosmos giving some movement and all of this with the backdrop of the Diefenbachia and crocodilla sleeve. So what's a photo frame op without photo props? Here I made a lay po'o learn from Alison Higgins tutorial videos. And I think it's gonna be perfect for my photo. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to thank Hawaii Floriculture and Nursery Association. I'd also like to thank Colin and Hitomi behind the cameras. And of course, Shirley, whose beautiful property we are on right now. Shirley, come on into the frame. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Mahalo. Hi. the brightest sky can you hear it babe?
answer call. Stop cutting, because <laughs> there will be a few. <laughs> She's popping out. Wow. You're getting applause here in the studio uh, <laughs> from your cohorts. And uh, we're, we're really sorry that you guys didn't have any fun making these videos. So uh, it didn't look like you had any yeah, fun. Yeah, it, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> On the contrary. Oh, my gosh. No, it's so much fun. And I'm so, um, I mean, grateful to be able to be a part of this and um, and work with all the beautiful flowers. What was the name of the foliage that you like? Curly something? Uh, curly Lawai. Okay. It spells L-A-U-A-E. And I think they also call it Green Wave. Um, it's, yeah, I just love that foliage. I always find a way to, to use that up because it's just so unique, right? And and um, that's what we love, the things that are unique. So I, I don't, um, uh, it, it's, it's such a treat to be able to use that kind of product because we don't see it every day, you know. That was a great one. Uh, another just quick one was, I, you might have mentioned it, but uh, what was the name of the, the fuzzy red flower? Um, lipstick pod or Bixa, right, to tell me? Bixa okay. something. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's so fun, right? That's always one that catches people's eye, and they always ask, "Oh, what is that?" Because I think, I mean, the texture, the shape, it's it's um it's just so unique. So yeah, uh, and it's fun also, you know, with the um, I dried it out as well, and it's just so cool to see all the parts and you know just the botanicals that we love so much, and it's fun to see just the different aspects of it all. So nice. yeah, those are a really fun. Uh, a really fun botanical. It's, it's actually a tree, correct? I believe. I think so. Yeah. I think I, I, I think I actually saw the tree at one of the hotels uh, one time in Hawaii. <laughs> Pretty cool. That's the beauty of Hawaii. Just the, the, the rubbish plants growing on the side of the road are actually Song of India uh, or, you know, or uh, <laughs> these amazing it's so plants. so neat. Yeah. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so incredible to see them growing like weeds on the side of the road when here they're just coveted <laughs> if we can even get them. So yeah, it's really special to be able to get this, this product in. Oh, we're so lucky. Um, mm -hmm. Another one was, uh, how many bunches of ficus root did you use in the arch? Um, you know what? It was just one one bundle that, that uh, you know, let me see how many... Um, what was I given? <laughs> I'm trying to, I, I have my actual sheet here. Um, it's great to keep the list of what we're given so that we, we, we can know the names and so that we know for next time. Um, but it, it just came in a big cluster that I, that I unraveled and uh, I probably used about half of it only. So you get a lot with, with, um, with the bunch that you order. So you made it last. I like that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, you can just um, just pull it apart, and and some of it's actually on my my wall right here, right back here. It dries beautifully. It's such a fun product. And in the video, I mentioned that uh, I used it for hair for a floral couture mannequin. And what I learned about it is that I I could curl it. Um, and create ringlets. I curled it around um, some kind of a rod, um, just scrunched it down, and then when when I um, pulled the rod out, it stayed in its uh, ringlet curly form. I, I was just amazed by it. So that's another another product that if I'm getting a shipment in from Hawaii, I most definitely like to order the banyan root because it's very versatile. That was fun to watch in the arrangement. Um, <laughs> Uh, another question is something that uh, I was wondering as well. Do you ever fully submerge uh, the tropical flowers to hydrate them? Definitely. Uh huh. Um, if if I feel like they need it, uh, most of the time when I get the product in, it's just it, it's it's so fresh and beautiful. The way it's packaged, it keeps the moisture in. So I rarely have a problem with it. But if I have if I have had it sitting out for a little while. Um, I, I can definitely submerge it, and um, and it, it seems to just perk right back up. Just do a nice fresh cut and just put it in fresh water. Yeah. And you you mentioned that magenta is uh, one is your favorite color or one of your favorite colors. Uh, it is. Is, is there a particular <laughs> flower that that you you like to work with the most that is in that palette at all? Oh, that's really tough. I mean, I'm always a sucker for those, um, for the peonies that come out, the red charm, or it's, it's called red charm, right, in that color. Um, just all the burgundies, and I, I don't necessarily have a, a favorite flower in that color, um, because, you know, color is the first thing that I see before anything. So whatever is that tone, I tend to gravitate towards. Um, so that was my main color palette for for this piece in the pinks and the corals and, and they all they all blended really nicely together, especially with the fresh cut um, dahlias, 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 however you like to say it. Um, there were so there was so much to choose from, as you could see. And um, I just really love how they all kind of just work together. When you think they don't, something, um, you know, some of the tropicals that have all the tones, they just bridge everything together. So it's really, really fun to play with that and to play with color in that way. When, when, you, when did you film that with Shirley? What, what time of year was that? Um, not too long ago. Uh, maybe it was just, uh, I think it was a couple months ago. So it was kind of nearing the end of the season. Um, I think she maybe had four or so weeks left, four or five weeks left of them. Um, so we were kind of, um, we were trying to shoot it early enough so that there was a lot of... Uh, there, there was a lot of growth still, and, and well, we got plenty, <laughs> plenty, I think, to, uh, to catch in time. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. I I I have been inspired now. I think I want to grow dahlias as well because that looked like a yeah yeah a, a good well, it's, time. It's so fun to it's so fun to revisit because we're in our dark days right now, <laughs> very dreary, very cloudy. So it's mm -hmm. nice to see all the the brightness um, you know, on screen here again. Uh, one question that is a little bit directed towards us here in Hawaii, but I was wondering if it's also something that you do. Uh, it says many florists in the U.S. order flowers by just giving their supplier the budget amount and color scheme. Is that something that you're that you do? Uh, it really depends on who I'm getting flowers from. For instance, uh, Hawaii. I just put together a little bit of a wish list. So they have some kind of idea of, you know, it's, it's hard to get in my brain sometimes. Uh, so just to get some idea, I, I listed some, uh, some of my favorite flowers, the colors, of course, the color scheme. And, um, you know, when it, come, when it came to the foliage, I, it's, all, it's never a disappointment. So I just left it up to them. Um, but otherwise, here locally, it's, it's, uh, it's great to... Um, know your growers, know your local farmers, then you know what they've got, you know cool. what they can offer. And um, uh, so it's, it's, it's something that I can just pretty much, ask for whatever I ask is what I can get, or I just pick from our local wholesaler. 
that uh, where you can just see everything. Our United Floral uh, Wholesale, they just have everything in their cooler and buckets. So that way, I like to go and pick. Yeah, I was. I, I ran that by Eric Tenoy as well from the the question, and that that is a service that is available as well. If if somebody just has a budget and uh, a color scheme that they're working with, and uh, you know, suppliers like Greenpoint can can offer that service straight out of Hawaii as well. So and that's nice. As long as you can, as long as you built a relationship of trust, then that's great, for sure. Yeah, you better have a, a lot of trust in your supplier at that point when you're <laughs> putting that out there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I wonder what your opinion is of the future. What, what do you think, what do you see in terms of, of the upcoming, uh, you know, demand and, and uh, uh, the future of our, our industry from your perspective? What, what do you see going on? Well, when I think future, I, um, I really, it resonates with me, the whole um, idea that we need to be more sustainable. And we've seen that today in the demonstrations, uh, sustainable mechanics. Um, and I'm, I'm really trying, I mean, just uh, um, even in the past six months, my practices have changed. Uh, <clears throat> and that's a, a lot to do with just, you know, what's going on in the world, as well as leaders like Katomi and Gregor Lursch, who held a, a workshop that was specifically geared towards um, working this way. Um, you know, I used uh, it, 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 I used the um, mechanics that were paper cups that are recyclable, the chicken wire, the rubber bands, the skewers, they're all reusable. I now have my label pins, you know, just for rubber bands. I have my, um, even my little, even the little bits of the hemp twine that I tied on. I take them apart. I put them, you know, straight away in the tin and I have them for next time. And uh, um, it feels really good to be able to do that as much as possible. Brenna did a fantastic job, really kind of showing the real practical aspect of how it can be done. And so beautifully, because really the end result is everything. I mean, did you not all agree that end result was a wow? Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Uh, anyway. Thanks, Hitomi. Uh, a couple more questions. And you know what? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to comment one more thing here. Please. Do, do, you, do you see that beautiful framed, dried, tropical design that's behind her head? Oh. You guys all see that? Look at that. <laughs> that's, that that's that phase after yep. Yep. those beautiful tropical foliages are done, and look what it turns into, a beautiful wall art. Mm -hmm. I wanted to point that out because I saw that earlier, and I thought, oh, my God, that is so gorgeous. Oh, it, well, you have to, um, it, it feels so good, like you said, to reuse things, to repurpose, and, and still be able to create, and it, it's so, um, you know, on point that, that uh, drives are, are more widely accepted as a form of art because, uh, I mean, you used it this morning, can tell me, in, in different ways, and it's so, much it's so much versatility, and you really bring new life into something that was given to us for one purpose. So, you know, the more we can use it, the, the, the better it becomes. Yeah, exactly. It's a real advantage of the tropicals in all the different phases. I mean, we just love yeah. what it provides us. And, you know, especially these times when there's shortage of supply, that's where mm -hmm. we draw, that's where we glean the inspiration from to create containers, create new mm. structures using yeah. things and repurposing them. So, yeah, Josh, it's really a very important part of how we have to think these days. I, I completely agree. We, we always try to use the philosophy of, of in recycle, of upcycling, where we, yeah. w with containers, that's what, one thing I brought up earlier with, uh, with Bruno and the use of containers. And when we build a lot of our things, we, we use old uh, lumber from demo sites or to build, you know, planter boxes or to, yeah, you know, exactly. and there's so much that can be incorporated into our field that others consider waste. And, and, it, and especially with our, the, the styles going the way they are, I think there's a huge opportunity and to see it played out uh, uh, from the floral aspect, it's amazing, you know? Uh, so uh, one thing along those lines too, a question is, uh, were, the, were the chestnuts dried? Yes. Okay. 
they, they were dried, yeah, because I, I actually, well, when I um, strung them together, they actually were not dried yet. They were fresh, and I just did, I just drilled a hole in each one, and um, and they dried beautifully, actually. You know, I just had to tighten it up a little bit because there's just a tiny, tiny bit of, you know, them shrinking. But um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I've used those for um, a few projects now as well. That, that answers the next question, too, is, is how did you get the string through the chestnut? <laughs> so. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just a, a drill hole. Pretty easy. Yeah, and I that's... guess this is, also, this is also another aspect of the repurposing, isn't it? Because you've been able to use mm -hmm. that several times in different jobs. Because a lot of florists often ask, like, isn't that also time-consuming? Not really, if you can repurpose, mm -hmm. repurpose it three and four and five times because you're not making it each time. And so we discard the whole concept of single use and make it a multiple use item and it becomes a much more sustainable practice on our part. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like we're all on the same page too, which is, you know, kind of getting, I, I didn't realize that we were all thinking the same way as much as, you know, as we are, which is great to hear because so yeah. we, we have to be the change, you know, I mean, it's, right. it seems like it never changed forever and it's come to a point where either we change or we don't and don't is not a good off alternative. So it's not it, an option. <laughs> it's really not anymore, is it? I mean, we don't even no. have the option. So uh, it's great to hear it from even this type of industry, you know, I mean, if other industries as well listen mm -hmm. uh, and try as hard as we do, maybe the change can happen. So this is exciting to see. And your, your work is is stellar and it would be I think you should be on a television show that's brilliant so <laughs> uh, not sure about that but thank you <laughs> Colin Colin does miracles in his editing <laughs> well that was it for the questions from the audience anything else Hitomi um I think you know we're really covering some really important issues and I love that and I love the fact that we can share it with uh, across the field in, in through your Hawaiian breeders, the growers, and then all the designers involved and how we then connect with our message to, to the consumers, because I think consumers care also. And so uh, I think it's great time to be voicing some of these issues and that we're in fact addressing them, which is we're in action, which is really a good, good message to put it out there. Yeah, I have to say, Hitomi, thank you so much. I mean, you really bring us all together. You, you're the bridge to all these different pieces, um, and um, it's that it's just so special to be able to have that. Um, so thank you. And again, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead right now and say thanks again to Colin for uh, producing a really fun video, and uh, thank you, Jeff, for running this platform um, and streaming this amazing webinar. And, uh, you know, mahalo to Hefna for making this available for everyone and all to see and to appreciate um, just all the beauty that's out there. Thank you. So true. So Thank true. you. That was, that was really fun. So, um, and thanks for hosting, Josh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my pleasure. Hopefully we'll do a Canada Blooms this year. Maybe we'll, we'll all get to actually see one another in per person. Wouldn't that be great? That would be fantastic. That would be. Well, thanks for coming up with saving the world with us. So this is this was fun. Yay. Yay. <laughs>